Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris and in today's episode, we are going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content featuring another rental team kindly provided by you fine viewers and today it's all going to be about the Palkia and this is a team provided by Stu. So we featured teams from Stu before on the channel, always a lot of fun and a big shout out to Stu for this actual build. I've been looking forward to playing this one for a while and uh, it's all about getting the alchemy supporting whatever its partner in pokemon is getting the trick room up you can see it's a very trick room centered kind of build uh, but that decorate move that you can you can then support your partnering pokemon with is incredible boosting attack and special attack by two stages so you look at something like palkia you get the trick room up get the decorate onto it and whatever it's hitting it's going to be doing a, a big significant amount of damage very nice team very excited to play it here is the rental code we'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do and then we'll throw the rental up at the end just to remind you that you can take it away and have a go with it yourself on the ladder if you would like to and if you do try it out make sure to leave a comment because i'm sure not only myself would love to hear how you uh, get on with the team but i'm sure you would appreciate any kind of nice comments about how you've enjoyed the team if you have tried it on the ladder now a big shout out before we get into today's episode to everyone that has provided rental cards recently it's been a lot of fun and like i've kept saying it really has made series 8 really enjoyable for me going forward uh, just with these rental teams and kind of experiencing your own builds we have a bunch still to play so over this week and next week we'll be featuring them dipping in and out of the rental cards featured and if you haven't provided one yet and you would like to to see a team that you've put together featured on the channel then drop it down in the comments and i will get round to playing it as soon as possible but uh, without further ado friends let's get into today's episode let's get some decorating on the go and uh, find our first opponent of the episode okay up first today we have a groudon charizard tornadus gardevoir uh, Gastrodon and Urshifu team. So, very interesting team. I like a lot of these Pokemon on here. Obviously, the Gardevoir is a strange inclusion that you don't commonly see, but a really nice one to see all the same. Same with the Gastrodon. Makes it difficult for Palkia to really be able to be as impactful as we kind of would like it to be. Um, but I still think we've got a good way to go about this. Obviously, Trick Room as well is a little bit more difficult to utilize especially with the the gastrod on there that can kind of take advantage of things but we do have rillaboom uh, and i think rillaboom probably going to be a really useful pokemon in this match even though we do have two big kind of uh, one drought bringer obviously to weaken our water type attacks and then the charizard to really threaten us alongside the tornadus um all right so i think what we're going to do is go palkia get a trick room up get rillaboom on uh, did we go Rillaboom as a lead, or do we maybe go with something like a Moongus? Uh, because the Sash helps us out. And then we could go Boom and Alchemy. And it's like literally going all in with Palkia here. Um, hmm. Do we do that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's click in. Yeah, we'll do it. Two Grass types to this one. So, both good supporters. Got a little bit of security with the Amoongus here because the redirection, obviously, with the Sash helps us out a bunch. And if we can get that Trick Room set up, then Amoongus becomes a big threat, a big thorn for my opponent to have to deal with that sport in a Trick Room environment, you know. And we are going to see the uh, the Charizard and the Groudon come out for my opponent. The thing is that my opponent's got access to here is just hitting Heat Wave and hitting Precipice Blades. I don't think either are going to be able to stop the Trick Room, though. Um, and we could even protect the Amoongus if we were super worried. Um, is it better to do that? I think it probably is, you know. I think it's probably better to do that because then at least we can guarantee that Amoongus is around the next turn to just put something to sleep. And then Palkia can start chucking out some big damage. Maybe try and get Alchemy on the field uh, as soon as we can. Gastrodon! The big, the big, the big champ coming out. Okay, well, this is all right. We're not seeing the Charizard Max here as well, which is useful. Just going for that Heat Wave. Palkia with the Dragon and Water type and should be able to take this, uh, even though we are um, getting hit by a really super effective move. Now, Gastrodon coming in. Don't mind this one little bit. That Charizard takes that solar power damage. 
Um, we can put the gasser on to sleep. We can put the Charizard to sleep. We can uh, just go for a spatial rend into the gasser on if we want. I think this turn it's not a bad idea. Just a spatial rend. Uh, just give ourselves a little bit of room. The problem is, does the Charizard have safety goggles? And you would imagine maybe it does because my opponent kind of freely left it in here. And it is a very common item on Charizard. Are we going to get stunned? I mean, if we do, right? That just gives us the opportunity to get Alchemy onto the board. So I don't mind too much. We'll see. Let's see. Charizard Maxin. Go on, Maxin. Here we go. Or is it the Gastrodon? I don't know. We'll soon find out, though. Well, it is the Gastrodon. Okay, that Spatial Ren going to do absolutely zip to this. But... Uh, and the Max Quake going to be a problem. But if we put the Charizard to sleep, we can put that to sleep the next turn. And we still got our Max... Uh, max Pokemon in the back here. Yeah, Charizard doesn't look like it's got the goggles. So that's useful for one. At least for protecting Amoongus. Max Hailstorm coming out. <sighs> Getting rid of the sun for us, which is good. Uh, Amoongus taking that pretty well. You know, I think that's one of the issues with Gastrodon is it's a little bit underwhelming at times. I think, like, if you're looking at it with, like, a Life Orb, and I mean, we still do really good damage, even when it's maxed. Charizard not in the greatest spot either. Um, I think it's a good time to get Alchemy onto the field and get these decorations started. We can um, maybe max ourselves here. Go after the Charizard. Uh, 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 uh. We, the big thing is we need to get rid of the Gastrodon. We could max. Go max Lightning. It's just you've got to be mindful that our Trick Room turns are going to end soon. Um, I think you chase down... Well, they may go after the the Amoongus again, but they've got to be scared about a Spall potentially here. Um, but I need to get the Alchemy out. We need to start acting on these Trick Room turns. Like I say, we could put the Gastrodon to sleep now, which is always useful. But the fact is my opponent knows we do have the Spall. And we're going to be slower than the Gastrodon. So the may Max Guard here to kind of compensate... For Charizard potentially waking up and getting rid of the Amoongus. Potentially. Potentially. Thinking that they're safe from a water type attack. Now just going for that Max Hailstorm. We've got to hope that the Alchemy is slower as well. Gastrodon. You take that pretty comfortably though. B -b 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 Big Thunder. Should get the Charizard. Yep. Okay. Get the Electric Terrain on the field. So Amoongus' Spore is not going to be the most effective thing right now. Um... But got to hope that the Gastrodon's got a little bit of speed investment. And then it's not minus, minus nature and minimum speed. But it's all right if it is. Because I don't think it's got the ability to take down uh, Alchemy anyway. And if Gar Groudon comes in, Alchemy going to be slower. There's your foo. Hmm. Well, I think we go Max Wormwind into Gastrodon and we go decorate because then we can put the, the issue if we don't minus one it's probably going to wicked blow though that's the issue where we could just kind of get rid of it now I think it's probably better to get rid of it now and go for that decorate yeah and then Palkia are going to be able to clean this up pretty easily Aqua Jet Aqua Jet okay boosting that storm drain Max Quake coming out not ideal yeah, into Palkia, yeah, that's good. Wow, it does quite a bit of damage. It does quite a bit of damage. Um, all right, well... Yeah, I should have looked at the um, the old Urshifu there. And it was an Aqua Jet variant. You could have just thundered. But I think uh, a Max Wormwind's still going to be enough to take it down. Yeah, more than enough. And now the Gastrodon's Max turns are finished not going to be able to touch the the park here this next turn uh, even with the boost um i'll just make dealing with the, the ground on a little bit more tricky i guess park here should be all right and we do have light screen as well that we could maybe make use of depends where we want to go you know do we want to go after the ground on or do we want to go after the gas run i think the ground is probably the one to go after in all honesty, um, because we've got Rillaboom in the back. They can come in and just eat Gastrodon for dinner, you know? Um, we'll go for another Max Wormwind. 
and we'll go for we just go for a dazzle I mean we could go for another decorate if we feel really really greedy I think just uh, hmm. now let's go for let's go uh, it's just the problem is how fast is that gas is that is that crowd on you know is it gonna outspeed us as a double up would be a little bit problematic let's just dazzle I think let's not get too greedy let's just get some damage on the field earth power we take dazzle it's a bit of chip onto the Groudon. It's a bit of chip onto the Gastrodon. We under speed. We're going to get the Groudon. And that wraps things up for us. Like I say, we've got the Rillaboom in the back. So we could have decorated. The only reason why you would really decorate there would be if you expected maybe a Protect from the Groudon. Um, but lucky enough, we were uh, slower than it. Because otherwise, Precipice Blades probably would be enough to take us down. Um, Trick Room, got a few turns left, but like I say, we're, we're kind of in an alright spot really, aren't we? We can Spatial Rend and just Dazzle and Gleam. And if Palka goes down here, we just get Boom in and uh, we deal with that Gastrodon pretty easily. But uh, we do pick up a win, which is nice for us to kick off with today. So very good game to my opponent as always. And uh, we'll jump into our second match of today. <laughs> Next match is against Gonza playing a team of Zassian, Thunderous, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Garchomp and Galarian Moltres. So some nice picks on here again and you know a combination that i commonly think about with zassian is always that glaring Moltres. i feel like they complement each other very well you don't see it too often so really nice to see that combination here uh obviously zassian with the thunderous makes a lot of sense the one thing that you can kind of point out here is that my opponent's team is pretty weak to trick room um if the trick room goes up they don't really have the pokemon that can function super well in there um, Tapu Fini definitely gives Palkia uh, a, a hard time for sure. But what ways has my opponent got to really stop us getting our Trick Room up? Not too many. I mean, they have got Fake Out with the Incineroar. It's definitely one way that they could look at potentially preventing our Trick Room setup. The issue I would see would be if they lead Thunderous and Incineroar. That would be pretty bad for us. Um, because then we're proccing the Defiant ability. Like, I could lead Rillaboom, but then Rillaboom just goes down to the max flying, which is maybe all right, because then we could just get Alchemy in and start sweeping from there. Um, but I kind of would prefer probably this, this, and this, I think, just to lock in in time, because otherwise we're going to run out of time. And I think just having Amoongus in there is a kind of secondary kind of support option to... Um, the Tapu Fini gives us a little bit more security there. Uh, whereas we're not bringing Rillaboom. I mean, that's that's the other thing. We get a bit more secondary support in the Trick Room if we need it. Because um, I think we're going to be able to get our Trick Room set up. Um, we do see Zassi and Incineroar come out. I wonder if this turn's going to be just where we potentially trade fake outs. Um... I mean, the other thing is you could potentially see the Incineroar with Taunt. Because of how weak my opponent's team is to trick room it's definitely it's definitely something i could see coming out here i mean it does mean that we leave the zassian alone where it could get a substitute up but at the same time it's not plus one so i don't worry about it too much i think we probably do see a taunt so let's fake out a fake out user it's all it's gone against everything in the rule book but for this scenario i think Stopping the taunt, getting a trick room up is probably going to be way more beneficial to us. Uh, even if a substitute goes up from that Zassian. Because the next turn we could just kind of stomp on the Incineroar. The thing is, stomping on the Incineroar is not kind of true, really, is it? Because the Incineroar on my opponent's end probably faster than, than Palkia as in a trick room. Um, <coughs> we're probably outspeeding it right now. But let's see. What do we see my opponent do? I mean, the per ideal situation, yeah. I was about to say is that Zassian withdraws. And, um, yeah, we get the, the free fake out onto the Incineroar. Um, and get the Trick Room set up, which is exactly what happens. And, you know, I think we parting shot out onto the Moltres. 
I think we make a bit of a play here because I could see the opposing Incineroar going for a parting shot into our Palkia. So I think to get around that, we parting shot out into the Moltres. We switch in Alchemy here. And then we get Palkia back in on Incineroar without the parting shot uh, drops. And then we've got the next turn where we can go for that Decorate Max and then just nuke something. So we'll see what my opponent goes for. Could we see a nasty plot here from that Moltres? Nothing maxing. I wouldn't expect anything to max here anyway, I don't think. Um, but I don't want to see a parting shot out into Park. It kind of defeats the purpose now. If we see the Incineroar go for a parting shot onto what our, was our Incineroar, um, makes things a bit difficult. But we do have Decorate to get around that. The, you know, that's one thing. But let's... Yeah, we get it right. We get it right. Okay, so that's good. Um... <clears throat> And then the Moltres is likely to go for Nasty Plot here, I think. Nasty Plot. Oh, Snarl. Oh, Snarl. Snarl could be an option. We see Moltres with Snarl now and again. So, Garchomp coming out. Okay, there he is. Chomp. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Snarl. Uh, that makes sense. But they've got to worry about this Decorate now. They've got to worry about it. Um, I think we max. I think we'll take a max Wormwind from the Garchomp. I think we go max and we go max Wormwind plus one into Moltres. Put the Garchomp down to minus one. We're clicking that Decorate. We are. And I think we go after it like this. Yeah. And then we probably need to decorate the next turn as well. If we can get rid of the Moltres here, uh, that's that's massive for us. But we see as plus one going to be enough. If it doesn't max, I think we get it. But if it maxes, it's a different story, isn't it? Different story altogether. No max from anything. So there's the decorate. Now we'll be able to nuke that Moltres. Bye bye. No more snarls. No more disruptions from that side of the field. Garchomp minus one. We'll take your Dragon Claw. That's what it goes for. You would imagine it does. May Sword Stance as well. May take the opportunity to Sword Stance. I think it's pretty risky in a Trick Room to do that though. Yeah. Dragon Claw coming out, which is fine. And it's Life Orbed as well. Okay. <coughs> so that minus one really helping us out a bunch. Uh, now we've got my opponent kind of pinned because the Incineroar comes in. It can fake out the Alchemy. That's fine. But we can go after... The Incineroar or the Garchomp. It's probably preferable to go after the Incineroar, to be honest, and get the get the um, the rain up onto the field. That kind of supports us a little bit better against Zassi and that could come in later. Yeah, <clears throat> here we go. Or do we see a parting shot? I think we decorate regardless here because if we see a parting shot, then we, we're going to nuke the Zassi and that would come in. Um, Max Geyser into Incineroar. We'll go decorate once again. Yeah, I think we take advantage of this because really you probably do go for a fake out here to prevent maybe a dazzling game, maybe another decorate. But there's always the opportunity to say, well, we're slower than Palkia in a trick room, so we're going to be able to get the parting shot off. Let's do that. Uh, let's hope they chase down the Garchomp this turn, which is completely reasonable, I think. But at the same time, I think just getting rid of the Incineroar, which is going to be something that is going to cause us a lot of issues going forward with parting shot, fake out, and things like that. It's good to try and get rid of it as soon as we can. There's the fake out. Okay, that's fine. That's like super fine. Now we get the rain up. We got one turn to max. Um, and I think we have to chase. We have to chase the Garchomp down the next turn. Um, because. Yeah, we go for max decorate max wormwind because the Garchomp's going to max. It's the only option my opponent's got. They're going to bring the Zacian in now. They're going to max the Garchomp. So we need the plus. That'll put us to plus three. And then that should be enough. Put the Zacian back down to neutral after its attack boost. And then we've got one more turn of Trick Room to take advantage of. Um... Which should be enough for us to, I mean, finish up the, the Zacian. We've got plenty of support options left to get 
uh, something in next to Palkia, like Incineroar, uh, to get another Trick Room up if you need to, or Moongus if you need to as well. So we're sitting in a pretty good position now, and I think this is a really good example of how powerful uh, the team can be if you get it in the right kind of conditions. You know, this Trick Room environment, get the Decorate set up, and kind of just literally blow your opponent away. My opponent not even going for the max with the Garchomp here, opting not to feel... You know, sometimes these situations, it's, you feel a little bit hopeless when you're going up against stuff like this. But at the same time, um, it just shows the dominance of the team when you get these specific board positions in game states set up where it's just too much for your opponent to kind of overcome. That's the end of our max turns. Zacian on the board. I think now we just switch into Incineroar. And ah, do we need to Trick Room? No, I don't think so. I just think we just Hydro Pump. And just pull in Incineroar, put the Zassian down to minus one. And the nice, yeah, and there's the, the cancellation. So very good game to my opponent. Uh, two really nice games there with the team. And we get to see, you know, like how well the Palkia functions with that Alchemy. And it's a, it's a really nice combination. Big shout out to Stu again. And uh, before we end, we'll jump over, get you that rental code, just to remind you if you'd like to try this team out for yourselves on the Ranked Ladder. Okay, friends, here is the rental team for today. Thank you again to Stu for providing us with this fun team with Alchemy Palkia. We got to see a lot of the team kind of fun function and see how it operates against certain um, archetypes in the format let's say but you can see from that last match in particular how dominant the alchemy palkia combination can be decorate is a very understated move i know it's not got very good distribution it's only really seen on alchemy it's the only pokemon that gets it but being a signature move it's worth looking at it's worth putting that pokemon in if you think you can benefit and get these board states set up in this positioning where decorate is an option because because plus two on anything that is restricted is going to be just ripping through your opponent and making it very difficult for them to kind of get a handle on the game. So in that respect, really nice. A little bit sad we didn't get to see too much of the stack attacker today because it is a different option to the team that you can go down and uh, gives you additional support and a, a different... Uh, offensive pressure in a trick room environment which his team is really heavily kind of based upon so uh, yeah if you do try this team out I hope you have a lot of fun I had a lot of fun playing it today on the ladder so I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, big shout out again to Stu and we'll wrap it up there friends so thank you so much as always for tuning in have a great rest of your day whatever you're up to take care of yourselves and I'll see you all for another episode very soon so until then take care and bye bye